Redfield and Wilton strategies to do a poll in July, and it found that 70% of Americans believe that children in schools should be taught to feel proud of their country. At the same time, 57% think institutional racism still exists in the United States. So, so Kim, if most Americans believe national pride is something we should teach, cool, maybe we should teach that. But also, if 57% of the nation believes that institutional racism is real, shouldn't we teach about that as well? Well, I, I think it's up to a teacher's discretion, honestly, in the classroom. And this is one of the side effects, I think, of the COVID pandemic, right? You had a lot of people that were able to see exactly what the curriculum was in each school because so many kids were learning virtually at home. And so I think it was a good thing, right? Now, I do believe that teachers probably should teach the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think that's what they're trying to do in Florida. Uh, I have to say, I'm on Governor Ron DeSantis' side here. I know people are probably not shocked to hear that. Um, but I do believe that we should be teaching some of the good parts uh, that came out of slavery. And I say that is because there Why? are some people that were born into slavery and they were able to take those skills that they learned and went on to be entrepreneurs. There were some of the uh, in inventions that we have today, like the folding chair with the bookcase in the back uh, that was invented by a man named Alexander, who was living in Lynchburg, Virginia. He was born into slavery, but he knew that there was a need there uh, because of the church that he attended. Had they not been slaves, no, they would not have learned those skills. But of course, I am not saying that slavery was a job program. That's not what I'm saying. I, I get that. But, but it, here's my concern with that. If I tell the story of American slavery in the abstract, in a vacuum, sure, right? We could talk about all the nuances of it. But this is a country that has historically whitewashed slavery. This is a country that consistently pretends that bad things did not happen. You add to that the fact that there's been a movement around the country for decades to change textbooks, to not even often talk about slavery as slavery, but to talk about it as uh, immigration, to talk about it as a jobs program and other things that you're not doing, but many other people have done. So against that backdrop, if we then uh, encourage teachers or encourage curriculum designers to focus on the good that came out of slavery, it becomes another way to sort of whitewash or to understate just how severe an impact slavery had. We are still to this day uh, harmed by slavery. We still to this day pay an economic and social and cultural debt to what happened to us in slavery. So if all that stuff is true, then a textbook spending time focusing on the fact that some people got some skills out of it. Uh, to me, it's time I mean, we could spend talking about the need for reparations. It's time we could spend talking about the lingering impact of slavery. It's time we could spend talking about the people who enter slavery with skills and who were actually selected for their skill sets on the continent of Africa. We can talk about all that stuff in a finite amount of time rather than talking about uh, a few people who were blacksmiths who were able to get jobs when in fact there's so many laws and programs stop people from getting access to jobs, to freedom, to justice, to food, clothing, shelter, equality, all that stuff even after so-called emancipation. Yeah, well, Mark, look, I still believe you, you teach the good, the bad, and the ugly. You teach all of it. And so I do have to ask you, you know, without slavery in this country, which, again, you had blacks purchasing blacks, you had blacks selling blacks, you had Native Americans purchasing blacks, you had blacks purchasing Native Americans, it goes on and on and on. And I think that conversation around reparations uh, does get very complicated. And I know that there are a lot of people that advocate for that. Uh, but beyond that, I have to ask you, what's complicated uh, where about would it? We be, where would you be today without slavery? That's a great question. That's what we call one of those counterfactual hypotheticals, right? It's hard for me to tell you where I'd be without slavery because our entire history was interrupted by it. But uh, black people or African people, more importantly, had empires. We had civilizations. We had governments. We had uh, order. We had laws. Were we perfect? No, no, no society, no civilization is perfect. But the question, where would we be without slavery, would imply or suggest to people that somehow we are we have benefited from the enterprise of slavery or that somehow in the aftermath of slavery we're better off than we otherwise would have been and there's absolutely no evidence to believe that African people were better after interacting with enslavers, after interacting with the European colonists. There's no evidence of that so I don't know where we'd be without slavery but I, I'm certainly sure it's better than where we would otherwise be. 
Yeah, see, and I, I would counter that personally with what we see on the, uh, the continent of Africa today. I mean, honestly, you, you talked about some people having, Where? you know, some of the kingdoms and being on the hierarchy in Africa and different countries in Africa, and sure, but those weren't the people that were being sold into slavery. See, so it's like, it's, it's so hard oh, no, no, to no. understand. But, but, exactly but Kim, Kim where, 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 in, where in Africa, I, I want you to be a little more specific, where in Africa can we point to and see any kind of problem, any kind of disruption that hasn't been touched or interrupted by your, Europe? You're kidding, right? Okay, so my, so my, so my family is from both Name a country that hasn't been... You, you're saying Nigeria and Cameroon haven't been affected by Europe? That's your argument? There's many countries in Africa that did not have uh, Europeans colonize it. And they're still down today. Look at the Congo, for one thing. We don't talk enough about the Congo and what they're dealing with, especially when it comes to China and everybody that is going into their do, country do, do, do. to abstract cobalt and lithium and all these things that we want here in America to make us feel good with electric vehicles. So if we want to go down that road, we can go down that road. OK, but at the same time, not every country was uh, invaded by Europeans that then uh, put col uh, colonization on their culture and their people that what did not happen everywhere but i can tell you right now in cameroon you are, have are a situation Kim, are you, where you Kim, have are you, people are you, running go ahead continue we have finish tribes thought, in finish cameroon right now we have tribes in cameroon right now that are trying to run from the military run from the government and it is black on black in cameroon this is what's happening across africa i'm not saying you being a slave or from a family of slave uh, slavery is great. I'm not saying it for myself either, but you can't sit here and say that your life would have been better uh, without slavery because we just don't know. We can look back onto the continent of Africa today and we can say that there are a lot of places where people are leaving seeking refuge to come here in America because this is okay. the land of opportunity. So just real quick, I have to take a break. You're familiar with Zaire, right? The country? Yes. Yes. Right. Do you, do you know what that's called now? What is it called now? Yeah, Congo. So the country you're saying wasn't affected by Europe, or it was affected by Europe because it was colonized. And you it's have the, only you now have being called Congo again. Of the Congo? You also. Right. My, my point is, Congo was, was, was colonized. When you talk about Cameroon, there's a reason why they speak French. It's, it's not because they really love the language. It's because they were colonized. There are many so the, countries you're that were not colonized, my point. The, uh, Mark. Uh, anyway, I, I got to take a break. We'll be back. Uh, on, I want to give you a chance to finish your thought from the previous uh, segment. No, I appreciate it. So the Republic of Congo, I mean, there's a lot of issues there. Sayer is one of the countries that was moved into that republic. And unfortunately, you have African leaders in that area that has forced uh, the people within that community uh, into slave labor today. Even children are forced into slave labor. And like I said, those are the ones that are extracting the cobalt and the lithium that we find in electric vehicles or laptops or cell phones. And so there are black leaders that have enslaved uh, black children and others. And so you still can't say whether or not our lives would have been better had we not been brought to America. I mean, you just can't say that. Now, could it have been? Sure, but we don't know. I knew by how close her eyes was that she was going to be on that bullshit. Welcome yeah. to the Breakdown Friday. <laughs> Joseph Ward, Patrick <laughs> Irvin, Professor Carl Tone Jones. We are here breaking down this young lady. I really don't know what her name is. I really didn't even try to figure out what her name is. But she's basically trying to make the case that <clears throat> black people, specifically black people in America, benefited from slavery. And black people in Africa are in a better place because of slavery and colonization. And she has the proof. And you heard it in her argument, but never trust somebody whose eyes are that close. So, um, <laughs> uh, Pat, you, it's your first time seeing it, man. Uh, I, I was looking at your face in the little down and the little screen on the bottom. I was <laughs> laughing over here. Um, what do you think about the talking points on, on slavery and, and how slavery benefited Africa and her, her take on history? Uh, she's def I, she's not American black, is she? I don't think so. I don't know. She oh. said she was uh, camera her people. Um, yeah, she did so, say something about being from Africa. 
Yeah, so th there are only two African countries that are debated to have been never colonized by Europeans. Uh, you, you know, I'm sure you and PC are correct me if I'm wrong. One was uh, Ethiopia, and the other one is Liberia. And Liberia has the interesting distinction of arguably being colonized by black people from well, America. Well, yeah, to be fair, to be fair with Liberia, Liberia didn't exist when the mass colonization was going on. So Liberia was, you know, created, but right. yeah, it was it was an, an assimilation of American and African cultures. Right. It, it, no, no, let's not be cute. With it. it was Abraham Lincoln's dream it was to yeah. send all the black folk back to Africa. Liberia right. came from that. So, and so let's, and let's, and that's why I say I use, I love to use the term because it, it causes conversation usually, uh, usually heated debate with everybody attacking me for, which I'm cool with. Uh, but I love to say black people colonized Liberia for white people. Right. I ain't saying I, I'm just. It's it's an interesting thought, right? It's an interesting you know, concept. Patrick, uh, several several African countries have resisted colonization. Well, I mean, she 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 never gave a list, so I don't I don't know which African countries. I know there's like over fifty countries in Africa, but I don't <laughs> know like so. She, yeah, see, there you go. So she's got a lot to choose from, but she never picked any. So I I just them the only two that I'm aware of. Is one that has a real, real big ass asterisk around. Matter of fact, you could put Liberia inside of an asterisk. Um, <laughs> in terms of this conversation, yeah, and you, know, you got just, just just move to the side, and then you got uh Ethiopia, which you right. know, do, do we you really want to do that with okay? So, uh, what we what we got going on is essentially somebody talking out of the wrong hole so you're supposed to use the hole on the top of your head and your your mouth this one not the one that your pool come out of that's the wrong hole to try to sit that hole wasn't set up for words to come out of it but there's so many people that like to try to talk out of it it's like the old chris rock joke which you could drive with your feet but that don't mean you should it's a lot of people got gloves on their feet and they own the steering wheel and they just keep running in the shit and resting knuckles. And that's, I think this interview is just an example of somebody driving with their feet and they think they are doing a good job and all the rest of us are swerving out of the way so that they don't kill us. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to say this, I blame Mark. <laughs> why, 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 why is she on your, you're <laughs> supposed to be, a, a, a intellectual you're like you're supposed to be a thought leader an academic i know those of you that disagree and you don't think he that smart i get it but he's supposed to be and he has a large platform at what point do we hold negroes with platforms responsible for who they choose to put on their platform we hold the schools responsible that. we hold the schools responsible for letting uh scholarly red and 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 Suki Booty and all of them other people come up and dance in front of the high schoolers. We hold the colleges responsible for having foolishness on their campus. When do we hold the black media outlets and intellectuals responsible for giving platforms to uh fucking people that don't really bring anything to the conversation? So there's that aspect, and then there's one other aspect I want to just touch on it before I land my plane. Uh, I don't understand. So one, the whole yeah. argument was kind of silly to me because like before she went stupid, I don't understand why this is still a conversation. Like, uh, why are black people still asking white people to teach our kids? I don't understand the basic premise of why we continue to have this conversation, like because no, uh, they remember, <clears throat> remember that time that Martin Luther King said that specific thing in that one speech that time, and then people forgot all the other stuff. Well, no, no, Dr. King Joe, says cause, no, because you you can't even say that because there ain't ever been one thing that King said in one speech one time, like the the, the well, see. See now, you you see you trying to use truth, Pat, and I'm just you ask the question. I'm just trying to explain it to you what oh, they're okay, doing. Because I, I, I'm I'm like I'm like okay, why why we keep see 
Okay, so 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 we know that white people don't want to teach their kids a certain message, and we understand that because we don't want to teach our kids a certain message either. But see, what the disconnect, um, and I'm confused is okay, white people like they they run the public schools. That's what they do. They kind of do that shit when it comes to like group stuff and running stuff. Even when they don't like each other, they, they kind of do that. That's kind of their thing, right? That our thing is singing, dancing, and, and entertainment. They think it's kind of like power and using it over people that like to sing and dance and other things. Power. So, 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 so what I'm saying is if, 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 they do they thing in that area and they don't want to teach their kids certain things why why are we going into their area and wagging our finger i don't why don't you just see your own kid what you want all right i'm done all right i'm done i'm I'm done but but see i'm talking about see you had cut me off dog and i don't appreciate that (laughs) my fault my fault my fault i'm talking about the dr martin luther king from the movies oh right well would not so you cause... talk about the actual historical Dr. King, but the Dr. King from the movies, he said well, something, right? Hold on, and what hold he on, said hold on. was by a unity path. But see, the Dr. King, you said earlier you can't trust people when they eyes is too close together. And the, when I watched Dr. King and the, <laughs> the, the one in the movies, you know, I, I made my screen real small and I measured. His eyes was less than a millimeter see, apart. I think that. See, but, <laughs> but you know, dog, it's about unity, Pat. And you know, you don't understand unity. And if you teach these messages in the school, it's going to drive our kids further apart. Because that's what Dr. King in the movies said. Oh, oh so, so what you're saying is uh, uh, black people want white people to accept them? Yes, right. Black okay. people want white people, but also black people want white people to, you know, care no, and no, have no, 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 no. You ain't even got to finish that because PC finna cook. But I get. Right. Let me let me paraphrase what you just said. Go ahead. Uh, black people want white people. That's the end of the sentence. Dun 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 dun. PC, give us a good sound over there on that soundboard. Dun dun dun. Get something like that. I don't know. There you go. There you go, man. So, what, what's your analysis of this clip and, and and like your reaction or your thoughts to what what she believes history is? Uh, <laughs> First of all, man, <clears throat> you took my joke because I was going to talk about her eyes being too close. <laughs> hey, you see what I named this thing? That ain't gonna be the real name, but you see what the name at the top. So. <laughs> so um the funny part about that is maybe that's why she thinks in multiple countries in africa maybe she's seeing them like like, like she's seeing it it looks right. like more than it is <laughs> both um, of y'all are jacked up for that i did not use that joke I'm, that's both i'm being petty i'm being petty i ain't even gonna lie pay the pendergrass right here yep so <laughs> but all right so just speaking to the fact that she has no idea of the inference of colonization. Um, <clears throat> he said, no. idea. Get it? Get it? Idea. <laughs> right. She has no idea of what colonization is. And, and then the thing is, like, I saw that she was like a, a person that ran for a congressional seat. And she has the Declaration of Independence hanging in the background. So, you know, that kind of tells you all. You, and it looked like it wasn't even up on the wall. Like, it was just leaning. Um, it kind of tells you. <laughs> what we're dealing with here, man. This is a raggedy, raggedy uh situation. Um, first of all, the the Berlin Conference, 1884 to 1885, was when all the European countries got together and decided how they were going to declare war on Africa and colonize and carve carve up and colonize Africa into different sections and regions. That e- even the borders and the names of the countries changed since that period in time. Like you said, like I was saying, um, the only country that wasn't colonized at that time was Ethiopia. And it wasn't because Italy didn't want to. It's just because um, the uh, people out in Ethiopia saw what was coming, got some guns and said, and not over here, fam. And, um, but, you know, Italy had to wait till World War II to, to get a chance to get back in Ethiopia. But prior to that... <clears throat> 
the entire continent was colonized. Everything she mentioned is a product of colonization. Maybe she needs to do some, um, <laughs> like she's talking about the Congo. Did she not know that, um, you know, uh, the, the stories of King Leopold and, <laughs> and, 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 and like the, the chopping off of black hands, you know, for the rubber plants and rubber trees in the Congo. That was the first form of colonization over there. Not the first form, but that's the first, that's, that's the worst, actually, in terms of like um, a genocide, the worst genocide in, in the world history that nobody talks about. And, you know, you go like, 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 you know, <laughs> it's crazy when Mark Lamont Hill could just make you seem like you're not black. And, um, and he had her, <laughs> she literally, I mean, this is why I, I struggle with our so-called um, academic and um, thought leaders, people who try to become thought leaders, people who try to become leaders, and especially when they come from the bourgeois class, because they either don't know or they feign ignorance when it comes to the hardships that black people had to go through. And so they play games with it. And what she did was try to utilize verbal gymnastics to bounce all around to talk about, I mean, she lost me when she said that uh, if, if slavery never happened with black people, not what, what would black, where would black people be? And then she would point to places that were colonized. <laughs> <laughs> Most of these places were colonized either trying to tell her. During the transatlantic slave trade. <laughs> nah, but you see the Congo, right? You see the Congo was like the Congo was like Gail says, like that just jucking people, stiff arming people, right? And see, it was it wasn't colonized. It was a dude named Colin that lived in an eyes in the Congo, but it wasn't colonized. He was related to Saint Eyes, right? I'm okay. just saying. Um so the the uh the funny part, not that funny part, but the, the crazy part about that is that she like she tried to like all you gotta do is watch she can watch it's a documentary. You only have to read the book, sweetheart. It's a documentary called The Confessions of an Economic Hitman that will tell you why black countries run by black people are so freaking corrupt because the CIA implemented plans to infiltrate government structures to create chaos and overthrow those government structures if the leaders did not cooperate with the demands of the white supremacist structure the global structure so if you had uh, I mean, you can see what's happening in Haiti right now. It's amazing. Haiti has a, has like a, a a world record earthquake like every two years. But the Dominican Republic, nothing ever happens over there. And they're on the same damn piece of land. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're stronger on that side. Apparently. So so when I hear when like when I hear people talk about we need to talk about the good and the bad of slavery. The only good thing about slavery is that it ended. That was the only good thing about slavery. Anything people made or created, and we talked about this before, um, was the, uh, what was it, the meritorious manumission um, laws that were put out in the 1700s that granted black people freedom if they made created inventions to make the, uh, their so-called owners rich. You know what I'm saying? Like a simple year in high school, American history, U.S. history, high school, Civil War to Reconstruction will cover all this shit. Global world history, modern times will cover all this. What college and university did she graduate from when she got to DC? Who did her homework? Who did I she pay to write her papers? She went to ICDC. <laughs> you seen the commercials. She saw the commercials. It's all the Romeo was like, you know what? Well, we already talked about a vision. So, um, <laughs> all right, I'm leaving alone. It's close. I'm, I'm laying them out. But I just want to say one thing, man. Because this this stuff about uh, black, you know, because y'all touched on it, but 
when, when you have black people trying to create this, this environment that white, makes white folk feel comfortable, this basically, it speaks to the fact that when they talk, when the talk is about racial unity, it's usually about the concessions that black people have to make the way to make white folk feel comfortable. And that's when you can talk about unity, but anything else, you know, and that's when that's, that's because we don't operate from a power position. If we operated from a position of power, we wouldn't have to go through none of this shit, but we refuse to work in ways that would give us power. So we keep begging and that's where we are right now with all this. And I'm laying on plane. Hey man, I'm just saying, maybe she used the close encounters. Uh, close call of uh, being up close and personal, you know. Maybe her favorite actress is Glenn Close. I don't know. So who knows? But uh hey man, slavery helped black people, bro. If it wasn't for slavery, black people would have never invented anything in America. That's just a point that she's trying to get across. So basically, it was the necessity of being a slave that ultimately spurred the inventive nature in African people because we didn't have any inventive nature in us before the Europeans showed up, even though Martin Lamont Hill told her about the different empires and all the different stuff that we built. And, you know, we created all the sciences and all that stuff there, but, you know, and we got all the proof of all that. You got pyramids sitting over there in Africa that nobody else can construct. But, you know, Black people, our inventive nature needed to be uh, germinated by colonization. Well, look, and and that's a great point. That that that's a point that I wanted to address too. I mean, and and I give Mark credit. He actually pointed out to the fact that they didn't just bring, you know, um, field hands over here. They brought some of the sharpest and brightest minds over right. here to help right. engineer and um, to to help to uh, engineer what America is today. I mean, Washington, D.C., the whole the whole platform wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Benjamin Banneker. Um, you know, the, the technological advances that came from those who came from the, with the the the, the, um, the, the, the genetic genes, the, the, the ingenuity that came from, man, <sighs> listen, the, the, the list of black inventors and things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis right now comes from the fact that those genetic lines that were brought over here spewed the genius that came through even through all the persecution that black people went through and is still going through today look man black the the, the the idea that we had no inventiveness in us we couldn't invent anything we couldn't create anything we couldn't build anything before the europeans showed up even though we got all this proof of this shit that shit's still standing today, even though we got all of that. Like, she come up with this cockamamie bullshit out of mouth like that, and it's 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 incredible. With with skin folk with skin folk like that, who actually needs enemies? Like she this is a politician. Th but this is this is menstrual shit on full display. Like like let's just be real. I'm looking. Cause I'm looking at her eyes. I don't give a shit. She gonna get all these puns tonight. I'm looking at her eyes, right? I'm closely watching, really closely watching what's going on, right? And it seemed like at one point she realized she was in some bullshit. And just you know what? Fuck it. I'm just keep going. I, at least I'm hoping that happened in her mind. Cause I, I hope she don't really believe that bullshit. Cause if she really believes that, and you said she ran, she was a what a, a senator or something. No, nah, it, it, um, I think the description under her name says something to the fact that she, uh, was a nominee or she, she, she attempted to run for office right. or something of that nature. Right. Um, her name was, see, that's, that's how much, that's how much what she was saying was bullshit. I didn't even notice her name was on the screen. Yeah. Um, Damn. she out of the DMV, you know, um, but like I said, man, this is, this is, and it's funny that we were talking about the shallow nature of people. And the, the you know people just you know how stupid you gotta think black people are, and how stupid black people have been. <clears throat> if you want to be honest about it, because people keep trying to look past silly shit like this to elect a, elect a person just based on likability and so forth. All she has to do is have people rallying around her to get her elected to to office because she her in herself doesn't even have the ability. To, to watch, listen, 
with, with, with all this out right now, you don't even have to watch. We don't have to read books no more. You can listen to a book. You, you know, you speak to, to be in a public platform and, and actually talk on an issue or topic. And it seemed like it's a, it was a, a campaign point for her. That's what it kind of sounded like. Like it was a talking point for her, uh, a campaign of hers. And if it's like, well, we're just going to take the good and with the bad. That's some real shallow shit to say. What's the good? What's the good? <laughs> close eyes. What's the good? What's the good about slavery? That's what I want to know. She kept talking about we're gonna tell the good, the bad, the, the and you telling me well, the good, the good about slavery is somebody inventing a folding chair. Well, Joe, I think you just gotta look closely at what she was saying. I'm just saying her favorite money there, is close quarters. There's a lot of, and that was not a that I realized what I said. That wasn't a shot at the lady because I'm trying <laughs> to be above water. Uh, I'm, not, I'm I'm swimming. <laughs> But if you look closely at what she was saying, I think she was getting that. <laughs> why why y'all stop laughing, man? Y'all make it it's not even like that. Yeah. Uh, it's making it, um, I think what she was trying to say was, we as a people would not exist if not for slavery. And so if we as a people did not exist, then all of the things that we have done, all the contributions we've made to the Duh. world, Duh, we know that we didn't want to be here. We didn't ask to be here. Well, I'm Duh, just saying. I lady. think that's that. I if think I'm just point, saying. I if that's, that's your point, you lady. Mean. If that's your point, you could throw that shit in the garbage. We didn't. <laughs> you, you act like we asked to be here, like we were standing in Africa, like, oh my goodness, I wish I could go to this undiscovered land called America well, and help well, them discover that land. They they weren't talking like that prior to colonization. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> but that's like the crazy. That's one of the that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. Like, like we know we wouldn't exist. We weren't trying to be African Americans. We weren't trying well, to be here. We were chilling. Well, Joe, 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 you taking this too seriously? Because, like, even even if what I'm saying was her actual point, which it clearly was not, because she then turned yeah. around and and, and uh -huh. talked about how uh, the conditions of Africa right now, as if those conditions don't exist. So, also, because which is the point PC was making. I'm just, but it still all goes back. Like, okay, we didn't ask to be here, right? We didn't ask to be here, but guess what? Guess what? Africa is messed up today. And it's got well, it's plain of documentation. You know what? I would tell her, if I could talk to her, this is what I would say. If you want to ask imaginary questions, I'll give you an imaginary answer. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 slavery hadn't have happened, the entire world would be Wakanda. It sounds like a plan. And we would all be traveling the galaxy because you got to remember now, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima said that in uh, what was it, ancient Egypt, almost two thousand years ago, they were only a couple hundred years away from computers. Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine the first computer popping up on the scene two thousand years ago. Where would we be right now? The, the technological advances that they were able to make before Europeans showed up is evidence. Iron smelting. Like, come I on, mean, come on, stop. Well, it. we need, like, I'm just, because I love the computer thing because it's like, okay, computers have only been around for about 50 years now, right? 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Look at the technological advances that have come in the last 50, 60. Like if somebody that was like in their 60s or 70s in the 40s were to be like brought back to life right now, they would not recognize the world. Yeah. Like so imagine all of these changes happening as rapidly as they have been happening for the last 2000 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I'm trying to find this chick. I'm trying. Hold on, hold on. She she also tried to throw in, um, you know, the 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 old red hair that they always throw in. Well, you know, black people sold black sold other Africans into slavery. I mean, we all do. We all know indentured servitude and war and stuff that existed well, in well, the world before the slave trade. We know. Well, I got an interesting point about that because it's real interesting how this shapes out. Now, 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 follow me, y'all. Follow. I me. found her. She's a Republican. What's her name? <laughs> yeah. well, course, I knew she was a Republican. What's her name? She's, Kim Clackick. Um, yeah, she's making Republican talking points. 
Mm-hmm. And she's in, in an interview opposing Mark Lamont Hill. Mark Lamont Hill would never do that to a Democrat. But right, all right, right, right. right. Follow me. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. <laughs> this is what I find interesting about that particular argument about black people sold black people into slavery. So black people are just as guilty as white people. It only works in that scenario. You know, when we start talking about the int- some of the interesting little hidden tidbits of slavery, one of them is that white women, we knew white women owned slaves. What we didn't know, what most people still don't know, is that when a white woman married a, a white man, oftentimes the white woman would sue her husband to retain ownership of her property, aka her slaves. And a lot of times she won. Yeah, that was the case of George Washington and Martha Washington. She had to. So, yeah. it, <laughs> so. so it, it becomes interesting, right? Because white women seem to get a pass for their role in every fucking thing. Every, so if we're going to play this game, we're going to say, well, black people own black people, so slavery couldn't have been all bad. Then now we got to eliminate the whole game of feminism because white women sued their husbands to retain ownership of their black men and won those cases while still being married to white men. So if, if a white woman could sue a white man for property ownership of a black man and win the case while still being married to the white man, then what the fuck are we talking about? Hey, hey. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But also, but you know, the, the, the bullshit that they try to use is like I was saying, we know indentured servitude existed before the transatlantic slave trade. But what the, the bullshit they try to use is, well, these people, oh, slavery already existed. These people were already doing this, and they try to make it seem like chattel slavery was what the world was practicing and they also try to make it seem like the africans like the bulk of the africans understood that they were selling other africans or even some africans maybe from their tribe into the transatlantic slave trade you have some african people who knew that was working with them they they had a better idea but for the most part we are we're also talking about you got a you got a, a an army coming up against you and your people and they threatening you in your safety and your livelihood for you and your people. And they say, it's either you or or, or your neighbors. <laughs> what y'all doing? I'm just saying, so let's not let's not act like if we was there, we would have done something different, right? But let's put some real context and real, some real understanding to what actually was happening to African people. Were there, were there some people who were complicit? Yeah, but that wasn't a large amount. We're not going to act like that was a large amount of African people. The bulk of African people were not down with that. So let's let's stop that. But that's the trick that they play, along with the movie with the movie version of Dr. King, too. That's the tricks they play. Well, you know, when you control the story, you control the narrative. And that's the whole game of history. Whoever wins gets to tell the story. And they get to tell the story. They get to tell the story the way they want to, and continuously use revisionist history to recreate the narrative as it best fits them. This is why, you know, um, and you know, we talk about where this could possibly lead. And like I said, Mark has spoke on something that was prevalent: the fact that now there are history books that don't even use the word slavery in them. And we got we kind to you know we look back at um, there were. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of them. Um, satirical articles, you know, satirical art- articles, like maybe a few years before they actually introduced this into legislation, into which they were going to, or just introduce this in terms of policy, because it wasn't legislation, in terms of removing the notion of the word slavery and slave and slavery out of these um, textbooks. Um, let's not forget who writes the textbooks. You know, it's still. Um, they're still connected, if I'm not mistaken, to the the United Daughters of the Confederacy, in some way, shape, or form. They still own some of those companies that actually produce it. If I'm not mistaken, now, I could be wrong, and I'll find out in the comments. But um, I don't think you're mistaken. Yeah, so, so you know, the narrative is going to often, you know, um, in this case, 
especially when you have an abuser. I mean, just think of it like this. Suppose the Nazis and the um, Axis nations actually won World War II. We would probably be talking in German right now. You know, we probably be I mean, I don't know how to talk in German. Wow. But, <laughs> you know, shit. Wow. You know, we be the you know, I mean, it all depends on who wins. And I mean, Napoleon would always say, um, I, I care not what people speak on things because I'm going to write history myself. And I mean, he's not the only person that said it. Every You go back to every significant leader, um, notarized leader of the past, you know, um, 100 years, several hundred years, uh, several centuries. And they've all said the same thing. Their plan is to win. Which is what bothers me with black people because you know when we start talking about women and Negroes in this moral this moral ground, well I'm gonna do it the right way. Man, fuck out of here. War is to win. Hey, hey man, but look. <laughs> you win the war, then you then you write in the book the right way. You yeah, we, 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 yeah, we didn't push them all over this ditch and do A, B, and C to them. They fell. You know, we you change the story <laughs> here when you win. You well, know what I mean? Well, you know, but you know, hey man. <laughs> what you African Americans need to understand. What's that, what's the later name again? Um, what is it? Uh, hold on, Kim. hold on. Like Kim, uh, Kim, Clickick. It's spelled real crazy. Like K L I or K L A I C um I C K some shit like that. Okay. Uh, so, Kim K K. So. Yeah. She was she she's teaching us, right? Because we have to understand the nature of the African person through the lens of a colonizer, right? So if you look at the nature of African people through the lens of a colonizer, you will understand that the African needed to be saved by the European. The African was living at such a desolate level, like they never really had thoughts. They didn't think in Africa. They didn't have thoughts. And the first time an African actually had a thought was when the boat came up. Cause they was like, cause that was the first time they saw something in the water, right? So that was like, so they had to they had to formulate some kind of thought, and that was the first time. So that's this is what she's teaching us. She wants to understand that the European saved the savage African from themselves in the jungles, because you know, even though African people was living like. A long, 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 long time. And they had like cultures, languages, science, like all types of stuff. Like black people were doing remarkable things on the continent. But see, that's not real black history, right? See, y'all need to start getting y'all history from the TV. See, books, come on, man. Books, come on, man. That's the black man's trick to get you to think that. <laughs> <laughs> the white man didn't come to save you when you're trying to read books. See, y'all need to watch out for these tricky black people who try to tell y'all, hey man, y'all need to be, y'all need to read books, and y'all need to study, and y'all need to know what's going on. See, no, see, those black people are trying to keep you from the white man's warmth. See, yeah. Yo, uh, <laughs> you know what's funny about that <laughs> is that I actually saw a documentary where they said. That when white people, and this is why you 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 really got to be careful about that. But anyways, they said that when white people first showed up, when the Europeans first showed up on the continent of uh, America and in Africa and in everywhere else they went to because they were the first ones with boats, the inhabitants of the land didn't even see them because they had never seen boats before and had no idea of what boats were. So they didn't even see the boats until somebody explained to them the concept of a boat. And then they looked out into the ocean and saw boats. I said, are you fucking shitting me? Man, I was like, hold on, time out, hold on, time out, hold on, time out. I know I was playing early, but my now come on, my my real so so somebody who's never saw a boat before explain to them what a boat was. That's what they saying. No, they saying that. I guess what they were saying was it wasn't until they interacted with the visitors 
who, you know, heaven forbid, I don't know how they learn to speak each other's languages, but whatever. Right. And, and once like they, both. Yeah, they pointed out and they, they showed them, they pointed to it. And then I guess when they pointed to it, the awareness was raised and they then perceived the boats. I just so right. Well, because yeah. you know, it was a language barrier because this was before African people spoke words and they just had grunts at this time. So no, they didn't even really have they didn't even really have grunts though back at that time because somebody had to uh, teach them how to grunt. All they had was uh, like sexual clip. noises. Cause you know they <laughs> They basically, cause you know they was fucking, so all they had was like the noises. Girl, was natural. Oh, oh, oh. You definitely gonna have to bleep that part out. Oh. <laughs> One long going around to my bang, 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 bang. Man. <laughs> hey man, this lady wild, man. The but, mindset hey. behind that. But I saw, uh, like, I woke up to a documentary, right? Because sometimes um, I have YouTube playing in the background. And I, I guess I put it. I woke up to literally. I woke up to a documentary where they were talking about um, the benevolent leadership of Nelson Mandela and how he was able to avoid harming white folk or for retribution for apartheid, and that's why he was considered such a great man because he showed his benevolence to the white captives of his country, which made the transition from apartheid to a post apartheid South Africa, you know, um, a smooth transition. And I'm like, oh, get the hell out of it. Like, like the only thing they changed, like the wealth still stayed the same. 97% <laughs> of South Africa's wealth is still belongs to white people. You still got black people living in 10 bins out there in South Africa. Fuck is you talking about? But that's what we're dealing with, man. That's what we're dealing with. And when you can create the, when you can tell the story, you can shape the narrative. And the problem with black people is we keep depending on white folk to write in something that works for them. And that's the biggest issue. It's kind of like, you know, um, it's kind of like when people got mad at black men because black men were the only one receiving news coverage for the lynchings that were the modern day lynchings that were taking place at the hands of a George Zimmerman or the police department. Yeah. And yeah, well, yeah. And it wasn't just BLM. It was some other, you know, um, you know, characters and they were, out, but they were basically blaming black men for black women, not receiving the, the no the notoriety. And the wild part about all that is, Black men don't control the narrative. And two, if you truly understood what was going on, it was normalizing the butchering, the killing, and the lynching of black men to the point where people would no longer have interest in it because of what happened so much. And it's a psychological game that's played. It's, it's operant conditioning. But if we don't know that and we don't study it, now obviously you see you got a black person running for Congress who don't fucking know anything about history, then you couldn't expect for them to understand how psychology works especially group think and all those different things. So if you don't understand any of these things, they can consistently pull the wool over your eyes and have you chopping at each other instead of looking at who your real enemy is. I'm going to give, give Sister Clackety, uh, Sister, Cl Sister, Sister K, yeah. Sister KK. <laughs> I, can't, I can't pronounce her name for the life of me. I'm going to give Sister KK. Oh shit, that's KKK. Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sent it in the chat. Her whole name? Yeah. Yeah. Well, her first name start with a K. Her last name start with a K and end with a K. So if you mm -hmm. remove, you know, you got a KK. Yeah, anyways, I, that was not intentional, sister. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. She and I don't name you. Your your parents did. For the um, day. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say that she's the spook who sat behind the door. <sighs> Why? Because she, you know, she got to play the game. You know, she on the, she on the enemy side. She got to play the game. She the speed show. She on that Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Funny. All right, Pat. Well, you know, um, you're going to be responsible for her. So. No, 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 no. I, I did. Did not sign up for that. Matter of fact, she was born in 82. Ain't that close to your year? 82, I was born ready. That was Lil Wayne said. Oh, shit. That don't help either. God damn it. Mm. Um, 
All right, I got nothing. Yeah, man, uh, man, but, it's, yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. but it's 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 unfortunate that we have black people who are willing to literally lie about our history and what happened to us and purposely try to dumb but, down but, our people. But Joe, is it a lie if you don't know? I don't. I'm not sure. No, she knows. I'm know. not. I think it's like one of those things where people choose to believe something because yeah. it benefits them to do so. You can't convince me she don't know. She, I, I think she about that bullshit. And that's why well, I'm not well, letting well, up on the well, 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 Here's what I will say. I think that, listen, man, she just could be a blind. She nah. just, could, well, she could, I mean, she could, she could, you know. We, she could be. <laughs> that is crazy. Y'all just, oh, what's the time? What's the time? Still? Listen, listen. <laughs> I mean, listen you've been on, you've been on one last three weeks. <laughs> My apologies. Nah, I mean, you do what you do. It's all good. She's having a blind moment, man. Maybe because there are people, listen, I've met people like that. So I don't know. You might be on to some pet. She might be truly ignorant to it. And, you know, but, and then people talk out of turn because, you know, for whatever reason, they feel emboldened to do so. I mean, I think she thought she was eaten when she said, hold on. I know we're not going to talk about what, what it would be like if slavery never happened. Look at what's happening in Africa now. I think she really thought she was eating for a minute. Hey, if I were Mark, I would look that behind me. Like, what Africa are you talking about? I would have been asking if I'm being pranked. Like I'm getting punked. Like where's the this where's the hidden camera? Come on, Ashton. Come on, Ashton. Wait, wait. Come on. Like you know, <laughs> the, the, the the to see her to to see her have a moment, and it was really an arrogant moment too. It was kind of like she thought she was putting him in his place by saying that, um, which is hilarious to me <laughs> to be that yeah, wrong. Did. Yeah, <laughs> to be that wrong about something, but this is but but see here's the scary part. These are the people that black people are dependent on to go behind closed doors and have college conversations yeah. about policy yeah. that shape our futures. Because hey, <laughs> she must be able to bring us closer. You know what I'm saying? So. No, no, but see, but but see, listen. If you look at the um con congressional black caucus, have they brought anything close to the black people? I'm just they, can you name any legislation over the last yes, forty yes. years? Yes, PC. They have brought things close to the black people. Um, mm. Auntie yeah. Maxine brought brought WAP close to the black people. Oh, yeah. I, oh she, yeah. she gave a blessing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she gave a blessing, huh? <laughs> right, I forgot about that. Um, earth shattering moment, you know. Um, without her, without her, I'm just saying, uh, yeah, you know, listen, man, she joked right now, another time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, y'all go ahead and talk, my brother. That just made life easy. I just about to remember to write it down. Now. Nah, but you know the, the scary part, of, like and that's the real scary part, is uh, like how about you? That's not the first time she's had that conversation, and right. who didn't correct her before this event? Man. Like the woman is what 40, 42 nah. years old. I bet you, yep. she, I bet you won't argue with her everywhere she go. And, oh, she's in her forties, mm -hmm. talking about an academic topic, mm -hmm. historical academic topic in the mm -hmm. day of in, in the modern age of information mm -hmm. you're just one google search away from being able to look at everything she's talked about you don't need to even get near a classroom she has the power in her hand she has the power in her hand and this is the best she can do it's, it's terrifying ridiculous. it's, it's, ridiculous. it's, it's, it's like terrifying that. But, but see, this also speaks to something else, too. And it speaks to, you know, um, and we talked about this in the Independence Day Project. The um, fact that every culture, every community has sellouts. But the problem is that black sellouts are doing it for pennies on the dollar. And so to throw an entire culture, imagine if she's able to push this through. Because she's not going to get any pushbacks from the Republicans. Course, and Democrats really she don't, she 
<laughs> she agreed with DeSantis. Girl, please don't come to Florida. These people well, don't come with that sister girl yeah. unity stuff to Florida. Girl. They're not. No, no. But, but Democrats don't care either. All she has to do is be in the sorority. She's in a black suit. She's one of the divine nine. They'll, look, they'll do the same thing they did with Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Look past all the hidden evidence, the things that she threw away, had black men executed, and so forth. Pearls. You know, just just chuck them. Yeah, yeah, chuck some pearls. You hey, know, so, uh, um, you know what? I lied earlier. Um, oh shit! So, somebody asked what. Which one? One of y'all asked what college she went to, and I lied. I said ICDC. My bad. I had to fact check. She, she actually went to Popeyes for college. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to. I would want to make that correct. Correct. Hey, listen, Popeyes man. Popeyes, Popeyes one of the other black inventions during slavery, fried chicken. Mm, mm. <laughs> mm. You making her points for us, yo. Hey, man. Hey, man. Nah, man. It's it's funny. She was like, she was like, um. The benefit of slavery, because and it's not to diminish the inventions that had, that that were created by black people, but the way she used it, she was like, uh, the the benefits of slavery were, hey, the first thing I could think of, somebody invented a folding chair. Like dance, you couldn't come up like cotton gin, <laughs> something that makes the the lives of the people on the plantation oh, a little oh. easier. <laughs> no, because because think about that, all of the terror that black people endured, it's okay. Because the good part is a folding chair was invented. Yeah, they got their teeth yeah. bashed in with chisels because they <laughs> were force fed porridge. But you know what, though? At least hey. we got a nice, comfortable, comfortable seat to ch- sit in on Sunday while they feed us this bullshit about forgiving yeah. um, our enemies and loving our enslavers. Yeah. Well, yeah. No uh, what's interesting about the folding chair angle is th- that she's stating that they invented something that made white people's lives easier at a time when they couldn't even use it. Right. Like, that's you know, all right, sister KKK. Hey, we we, we no, but we but we benefited from slavery, bro. I mean, see, well, well, hold see, on, Joe. hold on, Joe, hold on, Joe. I got you. We did benefit from slavery because we got to have sex. Mm. See, you going people. deeper. See, you you going deeper than I mm-hmm. was going. See, because I was just gonna say. You got to really understand what the word benefit means and the word slavery means, right? Because they synonyms. Yeah, especially when you know most of the sex was non consensual. See, well, see I got see. a chance. <laughs> see, see, I don't think either, I don't, none of y'all have never seen like the inside of a Popeyes University classroom. <laughs> I got a I got a cousin that graduated in '96, and you know they still got they got a they got one of VHS tapes, and they they. And it's not digital now, so I got a chance to peer into a Popeye's classroom. And you know, her logic really lined up if you think about it from the Popeye's class from the Popeye's university angles. So <laughs> I, y'all well, I understand because y'all ain't y'all ain't been privy to that. So well, no, what I was gonna say though is like think about it, right? Like the reason why black women feel so beautiful right now is because they desire by white men. And it's the same with black men. The, the, the mm. desirability come, mm. that comes from white women, that's rooted in slavery. Like, you know, we say we don't want to be fetished, fetishized, but like, do we really though? I mean, like, what, what, who's, who's, who are most black Republicans married to? Most of them. Mm. I'm not talking mm. about Sister, uh, Sister Kim. Cause I don't know who she married to. With that last name, I think we can all make a uh, <laughs> first name Jeffrey. Make an educated guess. <laughs> you know, first name Jeffrey. And she, now I gotta look it up because it's gonna bother me. Yeah. Please be no, black. Come on, Sister Clack. Come on, Sister Clack. Oh, I don't know. He's mm-hmm. black. Yep. He is not a black one. He's yeah. Not. He's not a black one. He is a Caucasus from the mountains of Caucasoidia. Yeah, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, see, bro. See, what, see, see. Can you can you imagine the slave part of sex parties they be having? Bro, see, <laughs> and I the, get the it. crazy see, part is, see, I'm trying to defend her, and I keep making it worse. See, see, the picture is clearer, bro. The picture is clearer. 
she's also talking about the way she was being able, she's been able to like historically or like uh descendantly benefit from slavery because <laughs> if we wasn't brought over here she wouldn't have met her husband well, that's that's why I said I, every time I try to defend Sister KKK, I, I make it worse. I yeah, mean, I, they, I, they, I they have way to work in Africa. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sister KKK! I bet her husband put her up to it too. I bet you she ran his conversation past her husband first. <laughs> hey Jeffrey! Oh, oh, absolutely. She, she, she. He was her research. He probably <laughs> he was her research. He was like, "Hey, sweetie, you're a big history guy. What do you think about this?" Uh, 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 oh, the sisterhood is taking a hit on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. just, sounds Jeffrey, good, babe. Jeffrey look like oh, he know how to do the duggy, bro. I bet you, I bet you, he know how to do the duggy, bro. Hey, I'm not. I, you know what, Jeffrey? Hey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I'm speaking, I to man to, Jeff. I'm speaking to you man to man, Jeffrey. Man to man. I know it's black man to white man, but like man to man, right? Look, <laughs> no, Jeffrey, I, I, expect, I expect you know what, Jeffrey? You got good control of your yeah, I, don't, I don't think I don't think Jeffrey messed with Confederate flags. I, I swear I think Jeffrey Jeffrey know all the big and smalls first album, I bet you. <laughs> but but anywho, man, we know we we having fun with that, but we really not, but we are, but we're not. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, you know what we've learned here today, <laughs> my brothers and sisters, is that mm -hmm. slavery mm -hmm. was good. God mm -hmm. ordained mm -hmm. slavery upon thy so he can save thee from thine self. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in the Bible, under Ecclesiastes 1777.76, it reads that black people need to be saved by D. White, last name man. So that's what we learned today. And we also learned that if you do mm -hmm. not study, read, and learn for thine self, and if you do not exercise critical thinking, and, and and have a, a a competent thought process, you can easily be led astray by people mm -hmm. who either don't know, people mm -hmm. who just won't know, or people mm -hmm. who know better and just bite that bullshit. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have learned today. So this is coming from Reverend Joseph Patrick and Carl. Y'all that <laughs> read. Read, read, read. That's why we do the book reviews on this channel, because freely, because KK, following KK. Oh yeah, um, enrollment for Popeyes University opens up uh, tomorrow, actually. Actually, tomorrow at 8 a.m. So if you want to enroll you, yourself, your grandparents, your kids, anybody you want to know on Popeyes University, hit me up. Um, email me and I can make sure I get you the registration link. I got to kind of hook up, because like I said, my cousin went there. So I got to hook up at Popeyes University. So I'm like alumni by default, by proxy. My cousin went there, so you know how we go, man. So, uh, mm -hmm. Joseph Ward. Oh, but well, before that, remember, remember fetlifestation.com. Fetlifestation.com. If you ain't listening to Fet Life, what is your life doing? You see, you were close to being out of here if you ain't listening to Fet Life, right? Because we're close to the end of this show. So, all of the close relatives that I have, I want to say, hey, and uh. We out of here. Make sure y'all catch the next video coming up. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I love y'all. Yep. Close.